Hello everyone, I'm the Viking General and this is the tier list for the Way of the Cheat Arts. I got this idea from a commenter, Fletcher, a ship with many sisters. I wanted to cover the arts for a long time, but couldn't find a suitable format. Making multiple videos for a single tree would diffuse the knowledge, but a normal video covering everything would be too long. I feel this is the perfect middle ground to get all the knowledge across. I will rank the arts based on the following criteria. The effect how long it takes to master them, and the place of the art in the arts tree. I will not consider what each art unlocks, since that gives an unfair advantage to the first few arts in the tree. S tier will mean it's an extremely good art and should be prioritized above everything else. A tier will mean it's a good art for every clan or playstyle. B tier means it's a good art for some clans or playstyles. C tier means it's useful for every clan or playstyle. D tier means it's good for only a single clan or useful for some clans or playstyles. E tier means it's only worthwhile in special cases or for roleplay purposes. P tier means it's only use is as a pathing node. So with all that being said, let's begin. First up is the calligraphy art. And this one will go into C tier for me. Uh, I think it is a decent art. It is useful for every clan that 20 diplomatic relations are nice. The Trade income for the terrace are nice as well. Uh, of course, being able to upgrade your philosophical tradition, uh, province specialties, also nice. However, I think it is a little bit late in the tree to actually warrant it anything higher than a C tier. Next up, we have Epic Ar Architecture, and that is a E tier for me uh, because you will never, because you'll probably never get this art anyway. Only if you really want to focus down this tree, you might get it before your campaign ends. Uh, honestly, the bonuses are much better than the counterpart from the Bushido tree. Uh, happiness is very good. To plus 10 per turn to economic growth for, uh, across all provinces, equivalent to 10 food. Very good. Citadels, Imperial Roads and Towers, also nice buildings. However, you'll never get to this art in a normal campaign anyway. Next is tax reform, and tax reform for me gets a C tier as well. It is a pretty decent art. It is not too far down the tree. It gets 5% bonus clan-wide tax rate. It unlocks a merchant guild, which is a much better building than the rise exchange. However, you don't really want to build these buildings anyway. Tea ceremony for me will go into uh, A tier, actually. Um, the 10 diplomatic relations, nice to have, but the main meat of this art is in the plus one to the 20 year daimyo's honor. And honor is very important because it will increase happiness in your clan. So I read this as a plus one to clan wide happiness and happiness boost from your art street can be very powerful because it will allow you to tax newly conquered province earlier and especially uh, the later stage of the game, the resistance to invaders will barely drop at all. So you really want to have those happiness bonuses. All right, let's uh, go to the Kodo Fuken art. Uh, which will be A tier as well. The building for the Rise Exchange, all important. The post roads and stations uh, unlock very nice. The main draw for this is the 5% upkeep reduction for all armies and all navies, since that will, will stay the same during the entire campaign. You will always have that 5% upkeep reduction. The administration cost won't factor in, into that anyway, and you're able to get this, this art very early on. Uh, then we get to the traditional building art, uh, which for me is just a pathing art, to be honest. It doesn't lock the better the better buildings for the Hallow Ground province specialty, but I don't consider those to be of much importance. And the thing with the bonuses to your castle constructions, you're only going to upgrade your recruitment castles anyway, so the amount of time and money you save with this art is practically worthless, especially considering how far down the tree it is. Now let's get to the, the way the Chi art itself. And for me, that is a definite, definite S tier as well. It only gives a 1% bonus to clan wide tax rate, but most importantly, it unlocks the market, which is the most important economic building in the entire game. Not only because of its value as a building, but also because it unlocks the recruitment of Matsukes, which are the best agents in the game for building up your economy. Next up, we will have a Zen, which for me is a S tier as well. First, because of the happiness bonus, you can get this art very early on. It also unlocks the Buddhist temple and for the Ultimo, it will also uh, unlock the uh, religious building for them as well. So you'll be able to actually start recruiting your monks and missionaries. With the next art, we will fall straight from S uh, right down to uh, P tier with the No, no 
don't really know how to pronounce it, art. Uh, it will give only bonus of loyalty to all generals. Loyalty isn't a joke that you can just completely ignore, but there are a lot of ways to keep your generals loyal anyway. So for me, this art is pretty much useless. Then we get to the uh, sumo tournament, which for me will get a C tier. Next up will be the sumo tournament, which I originally planned to place into C tier, but after some rethinking, I will actually put it down into D tier. First off, the bonus to clan tax raid, it's, it's there, it's nice. Again, happiness is important, that's why I want to put it up high. And the consumption of a single food isn't that bad, but it's still consumption of food, which is slowing down your economic growth. The main problem is that you need to go, get through a, a few arts, and especially with the null. I will only say it's useful in some cases. When you're in a position to actually get it, you should probably get it. But generally, I will just skip it and go for other happiness boosting uh, arts. All right, then we will get to Secret Police. And Secret Police is probably one of those arts which are basically determined by your playstyle and where you want to place them. So I will play them, place them into B tier because it is a very good art for certain playstyles. Uh, most notably, the bribing playstyle uh, because that saves a lot of money. But on the other hand, you could argue that it is completely useless if you never bribe anyway because all the other things your Matsuki does, sit in towns, apprehend the occasional ninja, it doesn't cost any money. But still, because I know 20% re reduction cost on your bribes is very powerful. And for the same reason, I would put Sword Hunt there as well. Uh, it doesn't require any bad arts to get there. It is a pretty late art, but a 10% success chance, really nice boost. And it also gives plus two to clan wide repression, which is basically the same as happiness. All right, then we get to uh, ninjutsu, uh, ninjutsu Mastery, which will for me will be a in detail. Um, Again, also because you need to get through the null art. Plus 10% success chance is the only reason you are going to get this art. If you want to focus on Kishu ninjas, this building is almost pretty much required because blinding grenades. Or if you want to go for a Gaishas, you need this art as well. But that's only for, like I said, special roleplay cases. And the only good thing that this art has is the 10% success chance, which is very powerful, don't get me wrong. But again, because the amount of time investments required to get this i would only rank this as d tier the school of shinobi however i will definitely put up to a tier because it is a very cheap art to, to get and reduce the cost for your ninjas and basically everything a ninja does except for sitting in towns and sitting in armies costs money and you're going to save a lot of money this way it also enables some buildings which aren't that useful but they are a nice addition to the 20 percent cost reduction already then we have the uh chunindo art which for me is a s tier i have doubted between a uh, between a tier and s tier but i finally settled in s tier uh although i do know some people will never get this anyway it is in the middle of the tree so it's not too easy to get through but for me the reason why i put it in, into s tier i really value economy a lot is that's also probably why you see more the way the chi arts in s tier compared to the bushido tree because for me because for me personally your economy will determine your success for your campaign and the chin in the art is next to the way the chi art itself the biggest the biggest pillar of your economy it already provides two food which equals to two, plus two growth across all your provinces increasing your trading comes by a bit it unlocks the which will allow you to really get that food snowball growing on top of that it also allows for the uh, highest upgrade for your craft work, craft work specialty buildings but those are pretty much secondary to the uh, food potential this art has and for the same reason i would put equal fields into s tier as well i think actually uh, this would be the correct order uh, because equal fields uh, also unlocks farm building which will allow you to start growing your food and because it's easier and accessible it is a little bit more important than getting the tune into art but these are pretty much on the same level then we get to the kinza mint art which looks like it is a very good economic art however i would even i would actually put it into e tier um because the five plus five return for economic growth is honestly not that strong considering the chin in the art already gave two and that's basically all it gives it also unlocks the uh Kabunu akama which you're never going to build anyway in a normal campaign so really you're only going to research this art in the case that you really want to build the Kabunu akama uh, then we get to essence of the spirit uh for me that's 
uh, going to be a uh, I have been down in between A and B tier and I think I will actually finally shift it into A tier um, because personally I don't value monks as high as I know some of you guys do uh, so for me the 20% plus for monk actions not really that useful uh, but I know it is pretty important for inciting revolts and then it will save a lot of money however what the reason why i put it into a tier is that it does unlock the uh warrior monks the naganata and the bow warrior monks which are really good units and i cannot deny that so that's why i eventually settled for a tier on top of that the essence of the spirit for the ultima doesn't reduce the cost but it will actually increase the success chance and increased success chance will save you more money in the long term next up is a neo confucianism confucianism I think it would be I'm really down in between C and D tier because on the one hand it is a very good uh, art because of the thing uh, the improvements to clan conversion it's very nice if you need to conquer lands from other religions the happiness bonus is nice but it is pretty far down the tree so I think I'm well because of the the place in the tree will go down will go down to D tier because it you'll probably not get to that point anyway uh but it is a, it is a decent art to get and nonetheless if you find yourself uh with the calligraphy art anyway you might as well pick up new confucianism since it is a pretty nice art especially if you find yourself needing to conquer lots of land which are of a different religion and of course if you're playing the echo icky this is pretty much going to be a A tier or even S tier because the improved, the improved conversion is very important. Next up we have a scholarship and uh, for me scholarship will be uh, scholarship will be uh, I think it's C tier is most warranted it isn't too far down the tree the extra success chance is very useful especially if you want to incite revolts or convert other characters uh, but I wouldn't really rank it any higher because generally I use my monks to convert provinces and that really doesn't need any success chance. But it is very nice if a random Matsuke wanders in or you even see a ninja and you can try to convert them for free. The extra success chance really will, will really help. And it also unlocks the temple complex which will allow you to recruit warrior nuns. But for me warrior nuns are kind of a um, roleplay-esque unit anyway so that doesn't really count for much in this case. Finally, we are left with the Ultimo Unique Arts, um, the Apostolate and the Economic Independence. Uh, let's start with the Economic Independence. And I think that Economic Independence is a C tier because, again, you will probably use your missionaries mostly for converting, not really for inciting any revolts still useful though and the g suite seminary will help with the converting provinces as well but it is relatively expensive however the apostolate i would actually rank as a a tier because of because again uh we have the clan wide conversion and the happiness as well which will help battle the religious difference and modifiers and the g suite college will again help a little bit with conversion so that's it for me for the uh, way of the cheat tier list i hope you guys enjoyed it to help visualize how this looks on the tree look at the image on the screen where i've color coded each art on the tree corresponding to that rank feel free to screenshot it for later use but i will also share this in our discord server let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree or if you think i missed something completely or simply leave a like or dislike if you haven't already seen it i recommend also watching the tier list for the bushido arts tree thank you for watching